Hey guys, it's Matt Fouch, and I am back with Fouch and Friends. So during COVID, instead of doing On the Couch with Fouch, because everybody was hanging out at home, I started doing some interviews via Zoom, and we just called it Fouch and Friends. And I get a lot of questions about when you're going to do On the Couch with Fouch again when we're out doing concerts, and I don't know. But I thought it would be fun to get back to doing some interviews. So here we are today, kicking it back off in 2023 with Mr. Patrick Barker. How are yeah. you, sir? The only friend that said yes. <laughs> so far, we'll see if any others do say yes. <laughs> I'm doing Patrick, great. Does Patrick work? Yeah, Patrick is my middle name. Roy is my first name. Okay. Uh, my dad's name Roy. So th this is a true story. So my mom was really like last minute coming up with all the kids' names. So Gidget, who's my sister, was named Gidget because Gidget, the movie, was being played in the waiting room uh, when Gidget was born. So she got Gidget. In the room when I was born was my dad and the doctor. So I got Roy after my dad and Patrick after my doctor. <laughs> I mean, wow. he did not think it through, baby. Yeah, I mean, everybody normally spends, I want to say everybody, but apparently not everybody, spends not everybody. time in those months leading up to the delivery talking about yeah. what are we going to name the child? You're right. I and mean, of course, um, I was, she was in labor for like 30 something hours with me. So she was probably just angry and was like, Roy, Patrick, get him out of here. <laughs> fun, so, fun. And the world would be an interesting place if everybody took that same approach. Yeah. <laughs> There'd be a lot of, uh, uh, let, well, no, I don't want to get in trouble. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So man, hey, it's the end of 2023. What has been happening in your world this year, brother? Uh, singing, man, we've been really busy. Um, so the, the group has probably sung more this year, uh, than they ever did. It's still a lot less than what I had done, you know, in past, we do probably 90 dates a year, um, but gone 120, 130. So I've really had to get kind of readjusted to that because, you know, for a few years, it was just fill in with this group or help this group out, do a few solo dates, um, second half quartet stuff. So you know, I was only gone maybe 60 or 70 days and I got to say whether or not I left the house. And so I was home a lot of Sundays. And um, so it, it has kind of been an adjustment, but honestly, and you know how important this is more than anybody. I mean, it's, you got to get along with the guys on the bus or it's just a miserable journey. Um, so we get along. I mean, we love each other. We're having a great time and we really are having a ball singing. So um, I'm having a lot of fun doing it, but I have had to get adjusted to, you know, being gone more, but, but it's been a, it's been a great year. No complaints here. So you, what y'all are doing is kind of the opposite of what legacy five has been transitioning over the last couple of years from 125, 140 to down to that 50, 60 range. Right. I think next year we're going to try to be around 50. Um, okay. you on the other hand was doing the, 50, 60, and now you're bumping it back up to the 125, 140 range. Yeah, as far as days gone, we still do about 85 days, but, you know, uh, and now we've changed uh, booking agents, and but you'll have a couple of days off, but they're from Ohio, so it's so far to go up and then go back down that you find yourself just on the bus for a couple of days. So, you know, that, that happened a good bit, uh, during this last year, we're hoping that doesn't happen as much. Um, that's not, that's not always the, the person's fault that's booking. Uh, that's right. just some, the way it works out, you know, and, um, you know, in the days we live, if it's a good flat, you, you really need to say yes. I mean, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. put a bit everybody. So you're not in a situation where you can just say no. And, you know, we've added a lot of salaries to the group that weren't there. Um, several years back, you know, Dean didn't pay himself. Um, he did it because he could, he did it for the love of the music. Well, uh, Paul doesn't love the music that much. <laughs> and, no, how, so, how many people do though? Yeah, how many people there's that, many? So there's that salary. Uh, Neil never took a salary. Uh, Scott Mullins is an added salary. You know, sometimes you've just got to make those choices in life. Do I love this enough? to be gone a few more days. And for all of us, the answer is yes. You know, we, 
our our families understand, our churches understand. Um, and so we're hoping to keep it about where it is um, and not do more than that. But, you know, those things happen. Yeah. So current lineup for the Guardian Quartet uh, or Guardians, right? Yeah. That's on the it, end, right? Yeah. Uh, Guardians Quartet, but yeah. Yeah. So the current perfect product <laughs> placement. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> Guardians Quartet.com. Um, Get them today while they're hot and fresh. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So who's the current lineup for the guys? Uh, so I am the bass singer. Then we've got Scott Mullins uh, sings the baritone, John Darren Rousey, uh, of course, on lead, and then Paul Lancaster uh, on the tenor. Paul's the newest member. He joined us a year ago, actually. Um, what a singer, my gracious. I mean, you know, you've been with the Jubilee Tours and all that. Just an amazing vocalist. And so we're doing a lot of live music now um you know with just piano scott plays the bass um so we'll do a lot of live music when we can and um and uh, paul is just really an, an amazing vocalist and you can't that's the thing you know dean was really the sound of the guardians i mean mm. you heard his voice singing tenor you knew who it was immediately and uh, so we were not going to be able to replace that and we really weren't going to be able to go in the same direction uh because they're just two completely different vocalists and so um we're picking songs that fit paul uh that fit his voice and so it's exciting you know and we miss Dane, the energy we miss uh you know his love for everything uh was so palpable uh when he was on stage and so he'll join us whenever we're close to the house and he's doing well people will ask that dean's doing well at cancer free um he you know is in and out sometimes at the hospital with infections and that'll happen with cancer in the first year um but i think doctors are figuring all that out and so he's doing well uh but paul's doing a great job good good we haven't um i mean we just haven't seen y'all much in the last couple of years with nope. uh, the way we are cutting our schedule back and then just the the concerts that we are a part of we just haven't run into y'all very often just a couple times um what i have heard at the some of the multi-day events it sound it does sound like paul's fitting right in and you guys are are um creating that i guess that musical journey obviously like you said to reflect the current lineup of the guys in the group yeah the tough part is you know the guardians had built a name for themselves really over the last 10 years i mean they've been together 35 but they were more kind of regional so over the last 10 years, they've really kind of built a sound and built a name and people have come to expect a, a certain way. And so we don't want to do away with that. Um, that's why our newest T-shirt says continuing list. Um, but we also know that we can't do it exactly the same. So it's a fine line, you know, and y'all have done the same thing. I mean, do we move into not contemporary, but more of a progressive as opposed to what we were doing maybe 20 years ago uh, where it was more traditional Southern, but hang on to both. Um, and so it's a tough balancing act, but, you know, I think we're figuring out y'all have obviously figured it out. Um, and it's some of the changes that, you know, you have to make. Yeah. And I, what I love about it is you can do some of the stuff that's a little more progressive, um, and and that those are fun and i i like that personally like i like the more progressive southern gospel music for my personal taste my preferences um but i also love to go back and like you mentioned earlier just with piano or piano and bass guitar and grab some kind of a, a classic quartet song or a hymn and right. just sing it with just piano um it's always cool to just mix it up and have that nice little ebb and flow for the concert experience yeah absolutely obviously, obviously for us we're we're grabbing some of those cathedral quartet numbers you know that scott sang for so many years yep. um so what are some of those songs for you guys like are you just dipping into some of the older guardians quartet song selection are you guys doing some hymns for that kind of what, what are you guys doing for that yes on on both our the newest record is going back on some of those guardian trio songs and just re-recording it so making it quartet songs um now when we do live music which you had to do because i mean hey it's the pat barker show now we gotta yeah. have a quartet yeah. on it I tried, to, I tried to name the group the pat barker show they didn't go for it <laughs> it um, may have got more traction though i mean hey no. if you put the word show <laughs> oh, on it people would think of it a little different 
<laughs> we would not have gotten more traction. Um, so when we do the live music, um, I'll make a little joke about, you know, this, that, and the other. And then I'll say, you know, people say that maybe we should do away with the hymns and, and we'll just pull out a verse and a chorus of a couple of the hymns. Uh, um, we'll do what a day that will be. Maybe uh, we'll do in the garden, uh, some things like that. They're just nice, easy. You know, it's funny. Uh, whenever you take requests, we used to take requests and just do whatever people ask. They would always ask for the slow songs. They never, uh, we would maybe get off fly away. Everything was He Touched Me, Beulah Land, Amazing Grace, What a Day That Will Be. It was all those kind of songs. How great thou art, great yes. faithfulness. So I told I told the guys, I said, let's just pick a verse in the course of a couple of those instead of just doing, you know, 15, 20 minutes because it would just been 15, 20 minutes of slow hymns. Yeah. Um, and then we'll go right into He Is Here. We're huge Tally fans. And so we'll do He Is Here. We'll do. Lord, I want to love you more. We'll do things like that throughout the evening. Um, and so it's not just a section of piano and bass. We'll put the piano and bass up for a few, and then we may bring it back out near the end. And we always do an invitation. Um, so we'll do something, you know, piano and bass uh, for the invitation. And so it, it, like you said, you mix it up. You, I don't want all piano and bass. There's people who do that. They're great at it. We don't want to be that group. Um, but I don't want to do all huge orchestra tracks and stacks and everything else. So you got to have a mix. The cathedrals really were uh, legendary for that. They could do all those big tracks, but then they could do a lot of the piano and bass as well. So we kind of want to fit into that mold. We'll never be that, but to fit into that mold is kind of what we're looking for. Yeah. Speaking of the cathedral quartet, I got something here that you know I have that you tried to get from me at one point. Um, just the wanna... butt. The, the bus there um yes still still in the original packaging yes and uh i have i'm, I'm missing a uh, let's see i got gerald wolf that has signed it i've got scott fowler ernie haas and mark trammell i need to get a couple of the like danny funderburk i need to get him to sign it you ought to get george and glenn to sign it i don't know what well i tried but they hadn't returned my 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 letters yet <laughs> uh but yeah i mean what i remember when i found the funny story on this i don't know if you remember the story i do I, I went just to a business here in somerset where i live in somerset kentucky and um it was one of those uh rental places that has a bunch of stuff you can rent for events and i was just talking to the guy and somehow we started talking about music and he was like hey i got a bunch of stuff i'm cleaning out my parents house and i got a bunch of stuff it's, i want to say one of them was like a southern gospel group or something i'm like okay so like what do you got he's like it's some kind of bus or something and i and i was like hey, hey. i think i might know what you're talking about and oh. so he uh he he brought that to the shop and i went and checked it out i could not believe it was totally random how i came across it but hey i got that what are you willing to give me for that now you know, I offered you 200, I think. Uh, yeah. for, uh, are, are you just looking to get rid of it, Matthew? We can talk I'm, number. I'm a we, number. May, maybe off off camera. I'm, but I, like I told you last time, I'm stingy on it, though. So 200, I'm, I'm get it. As you, be, as you, <laughs> I thought that'd be fun to bring that out. I haven't shared you, that for a few years. I have a couple of those buses. Um, the first one I ever bought, I paid, I don't know, $150 for it, and it was out of the package. And... Wow. uh was two i think maybe or breland breland was two and i had it up on a little thing on a display and she shook the thing trying to get the bus down because she wanted to play with it and the bus fell and crashed oh, and, oh boy I, 150 dollars gone i spoke in an unknown tongue that day <laughs> <laughs> but hey, i, I have no go ahead what'd you say i uh, bought a couple uh, that are out of the box, uh, of course. Um, so I'm just a looking, I'm just waiting. Yeah. You're, you're in the market. Hey, if anybody watching has one that's, um, still in the packaging, 200 bucks, you got an offer here, 200 bucks for in the packaging. Yeah. Hey, you know what? I am, you, you know, I'm a collector of everything Southern gospel. I love it. The only thing I am missing, uh, that I really, really want is that portrait of George and Glenn, that's signed by the Hall of Famers, you know, one of those originals. I don't need a reprint. I got one of those. 
one of those originals, man, that is really, that's kind of my, my final bucket list. I feel like I've got just about everything else. Um, that boy, if somebody out there was looking to get rid of that picture, I'll hey, know who to hit up. Well, speaking hey, of collectibles, you, you also at, at some point in time have had a pillow. Um, maybe the, some of the folks watching will remember, uh, the pillow that you had, um, I and it is what a what a great collective. I mean, there's only one of those. Nobody well, else can. I paid as much that as I pay for that bus. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a pillow? Do you still have it? Oh yes, absolutely. It's still in the bedroom. With, well, rephrase that. We have a chair in the bedroom, and it sits on that chair. No, it Stay. doesn't. Stop it. <laughs> It's got my face. So, so here's what happened for those, maybe some folks watching and don't know the backstory here. I don't remember the year, but, but it was one of our celebration events. In, in Nashville. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, Legacy five, I think New Year's Eve celebration. And we, we always had one lady that really um, wanted to do a fundraiser for the Legacy five foundation. And so she would try to find different little things to put down as like a, an, an auction. And yeah. so you could go and write down your name and how much you want to pay for the item. And then at the end of the event, of the event um, who, obviously whoever had the highest bid got the item. And that year she had asked Scott for one of our older back uh, table backdrops that had all of our faces on it. And she had gone in and cut out all of our faces and then put them on a pillow. Yes. Um with I think another piece of the backdrop as the back side of it. The back, so it's the back of your head. It's on the, the back. back of it. Yeah. So where did she get that at? I have oh. no idea. The back of your head is the back. <laughs> My bald spot and everything. Your bald spot right there. It's beautiful. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, you want it? What'd you pay for that? Uh, if I remember correctly, I think it had gotten up to like ninety dollars. Um, you know, I put twenty. Everybody was twenty. And then you saw me putting my name down and you went in and put your name down. And then I put my name down. Then you kept getting people to go over and put their name down, just hoping I would not win it. Yeah, because you've mistreated the pillow since no, you, I didn't. you you've yeah. had me on your car, if I remember correct. I did. Yeah, yeah, you're in the back of the car. I I I would have you dancing to your own solo CD. Um <laughs> That's right. That's yeah. Right. I had you and Chewbacca uh, next to each other having a pillow fight. I mean, there was a lot of <laughs> quality entertainment. What, quality entertainment. Yes. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> so, man, give me um, just a little turn here. Give me one of the biggest challenges uh, that either you personally have faced in 23 or the Guardians have faced in 2023. Um, and then maybe just encourage the folks by how you got, how you got through it or how the group did, um, uh, with using your faith uh, during that oh, time. You know what? I, I'll probably the biggest challenge, and it would actually encompass everything is making sure that everything I do is, um, gosh, how do I put this? Um, I feel like I'm stretched thin. I don't look it, <laughs> but I feel like I am stretched thin. The group is busier, right? So that, that takes up more time. We have four children now. So 18, 14, 12, and 18 months. Um, so you're dealing with a kid that's a senior in high school looking at college. You're dealing with a kid who's about to be 15 and wanting to start driving, and then you got 12 and she's in middle school and she's trying out all these different things. And you got an 18 month old who needs really your undivided attention. Um, and so try to be a quality dad uh, to all of them while I'm trying to be a quality singer and road manager. I'm the road manager for the group and MC for the group. And, um, and then you want to be a quality husband um, to your wife. I mean, that's really your first calling um, is to love your wife and to, like Christ loved the church, right? So then um, 
to my church. I'm on staff at the church. Uh, my wife and I lead music. Um, and then I also do radio. And in the mornings, I do Bible studies with folks. And it can come to a point where you're just, you feel like you're not giving 100% to any of it. Um, whereas you want to give 100% to all of it. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it really has just been, I've got to find time um, in this schedule to just be alone. It may be in the car. Uh, it may be waking up extra early. Uh, it may be going to bed extra late. It's sometime where it's me and Jesus and that's it. And he and I are talking, uh, I'm reading, I'm studying, um, I'm preparing for either the next day or I'm preparing for the day that I'm in. Um, but I think we get so busy that we don't realize we do have 10 to 15 minutes to shut it all down and just get along with the Lord. Cause really we're not going to be able to do any of it, uh, without his help, um, without his strength, uh, because in our weakness, he's strong. So when I feel weak, that's when he feels the, that's when he's the strongest. And so I need to just every day realize I've got to get away for 15 minutes today. Uh, Ella is at the daycare because on Mondays I am doing all of my radio I'm doing all of the voiceovers, any demo work, anything like that is Monday. So she goes to the daycare. But by Friday, I am worn out. Uh, yeah. She's a runner. So what you do, do, do? She's out. She's gone. Um, and so sometimes I'll have her go to the daycare on Friday. And, and I just prepare myself for the weekend. I get mentally ready. I get along with the Lord. I read passages. I pray. I, you know, you can't leave that out. Um, and, and you can't leave out your church family. Uh, you can't leave out your, your, your friends, your, your Christian friends. Uh, you can't just get so busy trying to do everything right that you forget, uh, you know, the main thing. Yeah. I love that. And I think that's a great way to wrap up the conversation today, man. Let's, let's try to focus on having that time at yeah. some point during the week and encourage y'all to take that time. And, um, it, it is tough with all the many things, you know, obviously for you me, understand. yeah, You're, I'm, I'm running a hundred miles yeah. with real estate. Yeah. yeah. And then we're fortunately we're off right now for a long stretch of time from doing concerts, but right. other times we're gone for a week, week and a half. We're gone for two days, three days, whatever it might be. I jump back home and it's like, I can run right into showings and listing appointments and it, it's tough to prioritize it and to focus on trying to get that in on a regular basis. And so um, I appreciate that word, man, because that hits home for me too. Yeah, it, it, it hits home for a lot of people and we're all for six weeks. So I'm just going to love on these kids, love on Linnell, go to church, uh, just, you know, take full advantage. Uh, you know, I'm posting on Facebook my daughter had a band thing today. I'm, you know, my daughter was in the parade today. My son is doing this today. I'm just, you know, going to try to go to everything, hug their necks, tell them I love them. And then, but then, you know, and those are great, but all of those things as good as they are can still take up our time where we're not alone. And it was Gloria Gaither said this, I don't want to go too long, but this doesn't take 30 seconds. Gloria Gaither said, I've, told them to brush their teeth. I've told them to brush their hair. I've told them to go to bed, do their homework. Da, da, da. But in all of that, which all of that is good stuff, what did I tell them that was eternal? Mm. I share anything eternal with them. Yeah. And so that's something I've, you know, I've got to be focused on is I want them to see me doing things that are eternal. And I want to pour into them things that are eternal along with all the you're wonderful and congratulations. And did you get your homework and all those other things? So uh, this six weeks is really a great time uh, for me to kind of get refocused and January comes in and I'm, I'm ready to do it all over again. That's right, man. I look forward to seeing y'all at some point in 2024 at a concert and event. Um, well, do an IMC event. <laughs> That's all y'all do. <laughs> Hey, tell the folks where they can get that shirt and all the information for y'all's 2024 schedule. Hey, I also do all the t-shirts I design and do all the t-shirts. So, um, 
uh, they can just contact me, go to Facebook, send me a message. I'll, I'll let you know about the t-shirts, but go to guardiansquartet.com. We do a lot of Bill Bailey dates there in the first couple of months down in Florida. And uh, we're pretty busy January and February kind of shuts down a little in March. And then we pick right back up. We're on the IMC cruise. Uh, so people can go cruise and uh, they can get all the information. Guardiansquartet.com, Facebook, all that. All that they good can stuff. see both of us singing bass on that cruise because we'll both be there. Well, they'll see one of us singing bass and they'll see me. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. But hey, I appreciate your singing. I love your heart. And uh, thanks for sharing your time with us today. I know this is the day that your daughter's at the daycare, but you chose to yeah, give a little time. I had some time. Oh, <laughs> it, this would not have been possible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right, man. Take care. God bless. Thanks, y'all, for watching. Thanks, Thanks, friends. See you, Pat.